to New Brunswick now, where Native leaders hope to keep the attention on their anti-fracking message. But after a tense week, including violent confrontations, today the talk was about going forward peacefully. The CBC's Stephen Puttycomb is in New Brunswick tonight. Stephen. Wendy, here in El Sabuktuk, it's been another day of prayers, gifts, and another sign of the growing support this First Nations community is receiving in its anti-fracking fight. An emotional private ceremony, the chief of the Assembly of Manitoba Chiefs and the head of El Sabuktuk in New Brunswick. Gifts of sage, tobacco, a beaver pelt, and more importantly, the support of his people from the West in this fight against fracking in the East. Both men agreed difficult decisions over how to continue the fight still need to be made. Yeah, you don't know what's going to happen. Uh, we are trying to get regroup. We are trying to uh, focus on a peaceful resolution. Today was peaceful both on the reserve and in nearby communities. But yesterday, the main highway between Moncton and Miramichi was closed down by protesters for an hour, and vehicles and equipment belonging to two reporters were seized by a small number of people. Everything was later returned. Everyone that stands beside you when you are on the line or whether you... This afternoon, a couple of hundred people from around the area attended a community meeting about shale gas exploration. The Mi'kmaq community here is very sorry. Native leaders publicly apologized to the reporters. Then the media was asked to leave the meeting while the community decided what to do next. Back at the anti-fracking camp, Protest leaders agree the key to winning this fight is to keep the fight peaceful. There are no scheduled talks with the Premier or any other politicians. The leaders here are talking to the RCMP on a daily basis, but there are no plans to end their protest anytime soon. Wendy? Aboriginal communities in New Brunswick are voicing their concerns about the exploration and development of natural resources. A dispute over fracking resulted in a confrontation Thursday between police and protesters. The province's premier and a First Nation chief agreed to a cooling off period last night, but today that didn't always hold. Stephen Puttycomb was there. It's International Frack Down Day, protests around the globe against fracking. Now here in Rexton, where there were problems last Thursday, where the RCMP tried to enforce an injunction, and then later there was a clash between some protesters and the Mounties, ending up with firebombs being thrown at several police cruisers. Six of them were destroyed. 40 people arrested and taken to jail, still about a half dozen or more in jail over, over the weekend. Now, this morning, the numbers here at the camp, at the same spot where the problems happened on Thursday, began to swell. There was an incident involving a small number of protesters who didn't like some of the journalists from the mainstream media. They seized the journalist's car and all their equipment, and they later seized another journalist's equipment and his satellite truck. They said they weren't being fair in their coverage. Now, those cars have been returned. After that, a large number of people moved up the road to the main highway here between Moncton and Miramichi and blocked it off for about an hour. After that, they moved back peacefully where they stay right now, talking about the day's events, planning to keep up their fight and their protest against fracking until they win. Stephen Puttycomb, CBC News, Rexton, New Brunswick.